some of you may be thinking, there are living things everywhere in the world, and a lot of them are so much more interesting than the ones that live in a frozen wasteland. In fact, isolation and low temperatures give rise to an incredibly unique set of organisms that cannot be found anywhere else. While small in numbers and often in size, the population of Antarctica is so much more diverse than many people know. Because of its isolation and cold climate, there are many unique animal and plant species that make this forbidden continent home. The oceans are also teeming with unique sea life. Not only is it unique, but Antarctic animals contribute quite a bit to science. Nematodes, whose ancestors survived on land left uncovered by the last ice age, are important to helping us understand evolution. Meanwhile, scientists are studying the DNA of microbial life forms to develop new kinds of antibiotics. Since Antarctica's conditions are so brutal, most animals that live there are simple, as are their relationships with each other. Since they're so simple, scientists can frequent this continent with the intention of better understanding how ecosystems work. So what exactly does the Antarctic ecosystem entail? Well, let's begin at the bottom of the food chain with krill. In Norwegian, it means whale food, showing just how important it is to the ecosystem. It feeds practically everything. Living in dense swarms of over 10,000 in every cubic meter of water, they are some of the main food sources for fish and squid, penguins, whales, and seals. Moving up, the waters surrounding Antarctica also contain a wide variety of fish, some of which are very unique. Notothenioid fish live in closer proximity to the ice and have developed a type of antifreeze in their bodies. Snailfishes and eel pouts also make their home here, along with ice fish. Ice fish are known for being the only vertebrates not to have hemoglobin, or a red blood pigment. Oxygen in their bodies is actually transported by blood plasma. Antarctic fish are known to feed predators like whales, seals, and birds. Speaking of birds, let's move on to everyone's favorite Antarctic resident, the penguin. They are by far the most common birds in the Antarctic, having colonies with populations competing with that of some large cities. Only emperor and Adelie penguins live on the continent for the entire year, but many species breed on its shores in the summer. What's fascinating about these birds is that they are very specifically adapted for frigid weather. The blood flow to their feet is controlled closely when they stand on frigid ice shelves. While they can't fly, they make use of their wings as flippers to help them swim and dive because their bodies are perfectly streamlined. With a layer of fat covered by both downy and waterproof feathers, they are also able to keep so warm that they sometimes overheat in the summer. Their meals consist of fish, squid, crustaceans, and krill. While they have no natural land predators, eggs and chicks may serve as a wholesome meal for skuas, or in the water they may be hunted by leopard seals and killer whales. The bird population doesn't end with penguins. Albatrosses, petrels, and skuas patrol the skies of the South Pole with lots of fat to keep them warm. Many of them can dive as well as fly, such as the diving petrel, while others can skip across the surface of the water like storm petrels. Meanwhile, skuas are widespread scavengers, known for chasing other birds and forcing them to drop their catches. They will eat anything. Albatrosses, on the other hand, or wing, are the largest seabirds in the world. Often traveling 1,000 kilometers a day, they cover vast distances in search of food, but often visiting the Antarctic. Birds and fish aren't the only ones to live in the Antarctic, but mammals too. Seals typically feed on fish, squid, and krill, having thick layers of blubber to serve as both insulation and a food reserve. Sometimes living alone, like leopard and raw seals, or in packs, weddell and crab-eater seals, they only leave the water to breed, rest, and molt. Their larger cousins, the whales, are migratory and leave during the winter to raise their young in warmer waters. Nevertheless, they frequent Antarctic waters for feeding. Toothed whales, like the sperm whale, hunt fish with echolocation, while baleen whales, like the minke whale, feed on plankton, krill, and small fish. The largest dolphin is the killer whale, which preys on penguins, fish, and seals. Fascinatingly enough, they seem to have a language they use to communicate within pods. Since they are so well built for the cold, many Antarctic species will not be able to survive in warmer temperatures. Currently, scientists are observing these life forms to see how they react to climate change. But who of the previously described animals are in the most danger? Let's begin with fish. Antarctic fish are incredibly important to benthic and pelagic marine ecosystems, feeding predators like whales, seals, and birds. In the 1960s, large fishing fleets arrived in the Antarctic. While they were being monitored through licenses, fish were still being exploited. In terms of tonnage, the amount of Antarctic fish taken from the sea is close to that of whaling. Despite this, we didn't know that fish were being hunted like this until the 1970s. From the 1980s to the present day, krill have also been exploited. 
Some small fisheries still exist too, but now they are regulated by the Convention for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources. Fish aren't alone in this matter. The albatross is in serious danger of extinction. 100,000 of them are being killed each year, and if we don't take urgent action, they will be extinct within decades. Part of this problem can be found in the fact that they lay one egg every other year and take 10 years to reach sexual maturity. Some can live up to 60 years, but many are being killed off before age 30. Like marine animals, fishing has posed a huge threat to them. Albatrosses try to eat the bait on the hooks of tuna longliners and end up drowning. Others die from collisions with trawl net cables. Currently, populations have declined by a third, but some measures are being taken to protect them. Fisheries are attempting to make lines heavier so that they sink faster. They're also keeping carrion off board so that the birds won't feel compelled to go near the ship. Lines will also be set at night and with bright colors to scare the birds. Other seabirds are also in danger of population loss too. Along with fisheries, other risks threaten them. Skewas have a more indirect risk. An important part of their diet is the burrowing petrel, which can be found on some islands surrounding Antarctica. Cats, an alien species introduced to these islands, are hunting and killing these petrels, cutting off the food supply to skewas. Because of global warming, a crustacean called the king crab has ventured south into the Antarctic region. Currently, they haven't quite reached Antarctica's continental shelf because the water is still too cold, but only time will tell when they do. Introducing a new species to Antarctica's ecosystem would contribute to population loss of echinoderms and mollusks, as well as lure more crab-eating predators. Invasive species like this could potentially damage the current balance we are working so hard to protect. But let's try to end on a more positive note. Antarctic whales and seals were almost driven to extinction by humans in the past. Now, however, they are strictly protected, resulting in some species recovering very well. Their populations are still lower than that of times before hunting began, and it may take centuries for equilibrium to once again be reached. A brighter future awaits the whales of the Antarctic thanks to our efforts to preserve them. But it can't be ignored that other animals are still at great risk of extinction. Just because Antarctica's ecosystem is simple doesn't mean that it's sturdy. Losing members of this tightly intertwined web of life would cause damage beyond the effects of warming temperatures and pollution. <laughs>